Recently I started writing a novel, and one of the major themes is interstellar travel. This got me curious, how hard would it actually be to accelerate a ship with a city-sized mass to the stars? I was very surprised to learn that it's actually much harder than what I had previously thought. To start, let's get some perspective. The furthest man has ever travelled from the Earth was the crew of Apollo 13 as they passed by the far side of the moon, placing them at a distance of 400,171 kilometres from the Earth. To do just this required the most powerful rocket ever created, the Saturn V. However, in cosmic terms, 400,000 kilometres from the Earth is just by our doorstep. The closest star, Proxima Centauri, is 40 trillion kilometres away. So how are we going to get there? For the purposes of this board experiment, a sizable human population is used, and a spaceship design selected is the equivalent size of an O'Neill cylinder, which is a rotating cylinder 32 kilometres in length. How could we accelerate such a large ship to a speed which will let the inhabitants reach the nearest star within their lifetime? Most spaceships today use chemical propulsion. Chemical rockets use, unsurprisingly, chemical reactions to create thrust. Using chemical rockets to reach the stars, however, would simply not work because these types of rockets have very low fuel efficiency. They are so inefficient that there will not be enough fuel on the planet to reach the nearest stars within a millennium. So chemical rockets cannot be used because of their tremendous weight needed for fuel. An alternative thruster would use ion thrusters. This type of thruster works by ionizing propellant using electron bombardment. Xenon is widely used as a propellant in this case for its high atomic mass. With ion thrusters, the upside is that it requires significantly less fuel in comparison to chemical rockets and the speed would be much greater as well. However, the acceleration is just a fraction of what chemical rockets are capable of and because of this, accelerating a spacecraft the size of an O'Neill cylinder to a significant fraction of the speed of light would take tens of thousands of years. So with these options off the table, there are other designs which do not require fuel. Solar sails, laser propulsion and buzzard ramjets Buzzard ramjets are a commonly used science fiction concept which works by collecting the hydrogen gas which is known to be sparsely scattered in interstellar space. The hydrogen fuel is used for nuclear fusion propulsion with the upside to this method being that the fuel is collected rather than stored on board as the journey is made. However, there are many problems with the design which remain unsolved. One of the most critical problems is that the density of the interstellar medium is much less than previously thought, meaning that the hydrogen fuel would be much more scarce and harder to collect. Solar sails are one of the most hopeful methods for accelerating a spacecraft to a significant fraction of the speed of light. This concept works by making a giant mirror which uses pressure from radiation to accelerate it over time. Several concept interstellar probes are already actually imagined, such as Star Wisp. Probes like this could be feasible within a century if research on solar sails continues. Laser propulsion also works on similar methods, using a powered laser on Earth to power the acceleration of a solar sail much faster than using the sun. Several probes have already been proposed, including Breakthrough Starshot, which would accelerate a thousand tiny probes to the Alpha Centauri system at 20% the speed of light using ground-based lasers. This project is being backed by Mark Zuckerberg and Stephen Hawking. In the future, these two methods seem extremely promising for interstellar travel of uploaded humans and space probes. However, accelerating a city-sized ship 32 kilometers in length would still take thousands of years using these methods. So now we come down to the last three options which may hold promise. Project Icarus and Project Daedalus are two examples of large spaceships which can accelerate to a significant fraction of the speed of light using fusion and fission methods. Fusion engines fuse elements together which creates energy for acceleration. An example of a ship designed based on fusion is Project Daedalus. This hypothetical ship was a Ford experiment designed by the British Interplanetary Society from 1973 to 1978. Using fusion for a ship of 1700 metric tons, it would accelerate to 10% the speed of light and above, reaching a destination just within a human lifetime. A similar concept is nuclear pulse propulsion, which uses repurposed nuclear weapons as thrust. This concept has actually been explored for giant cylindrical ships 19.32 kilometers in diameter, finding that 224 billion tons of repellent is needed. This would be mined and extracted from off-world sources. Even these designs, however, anticipate that journeys would take place over several thousands of years. So with these concepts covered, there is one final fuel source that could work with a high energy density and specific impulse in comparison to any of the other ideas above. An antimatter rocket is estimated to accelerate smaller rockets up to 90% the speed of light, 
The big problem with antimatter, however, is the generation of it and the containment of it. Antimatter is extremely volatile. To use it, the ship would need to have an advanced storage method on board, and much more advances would be needed in production, implementation, and design. So of all this considered, acceleration would be just one issue that would plague a ship attempting to travel a significant fraction of the speed of light. Other issues include time dilation, onboard disasters, and the problem of dust grains impacting the ship with the force of a powerful bomb. However, each of these issues is so in-depth, a video for each would be needed to properly explain them. So which method do you think would work best to accelerate such a large ship to a significant fraction of the speed of light? Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and thanks for watching.